tell you that they've now deployed a second helicopter. It's directly above me now. So I don't know, Dalton, if you can pan up and get that helicopter. There are now two helicopters. Dalton, see, here's one over to our right here. Can you see this one right over here? There are two helicopters. There's one here and then there's one directly overhead and they are searching this area very close to the ground. Now we also just recently saw rollout in the back of a pickup truck from the staging area here. Um, a man in army fatigues. He was laden with bags of gear in the back of that um, pickup truck. We have been told that there are assets from across the state, so it would not be surprising if the National Guard were here too. We do not have that confirmed, but certainly a military type deployment happening just in the last couple of minutes. That truck leaving the staging ground here, going past the police barricade you see beyond us there at Old Hammond and Drusilla and heading towards the Be Quick gas station. That is where this all went down at about nine o'clock this morning, Gina. All right, Jennifer, I know you are working to give us updates there. We saw you had talked to Corporal McNeely with the Baton Rouge Police Department. So as this is in a very active scene, you said that this was the most kind of worked up or emotional that you had seen him in all of the years uh, that you worked with him as the public information officer there. Yeah, Gina, um, I'm I'm from Baton Rouge, and um, I've worked with Corporal McNeely ever since my days at um, the paper at LSU back in um, the early 2000s, and then at two different television stations here in Baton Rouge. And he's a jovial guy. Um, he's a nice guy. Um, but today he's heartbroken and um, that's the sentiment that we're getting from all of the officers here. They're laser focused on what they are doing right now. They are seeing everything, but they're heartbroken. As soon as you snap them out of it and ask them, well, are your friends okay? Just speaking from one person to another, that's when they kind of shake off that police persona and and you can tell it hasn't really hit them yet. Um, Corporal McNeely was um, upset and, and agitated, and, and he had to come out here and he had to tell us that, that they still haven't notified all of the families. I mean, Gina, that's, that's a reality that in the news business we are blessed not to know. Um, we're all very safe here. We're behind a lot of state, local, parish assets. Um, these guys have all got our backs right now. Um, but the same can't be said for the police out here. And they're very aware of that. They're very sensitive to that. They take all of this very personally. A lot of these men and women who are out here are here from across the state. They don't know, they're, they're not here for Baton Rouge. They had nothing to do with Alton Sterling. They had nothing to do with the protests. They've been called in and they're here and now they're, they're in the line of fire still. Um, and so they are laser focused still at this hour. Um, but whenever you ask them a personal question, like are their friends okay? Uh, there's still no answers for that.